Okay, today I'm going to be using Boyle's self-flowing flask along with polyethylene glycol, the self-flowing liquid or the self-siphoning liquid. And I'm gonna pour the polyethylene glycol in Boyle's flask and see if we can really push the limits and get perpetual motion. Okay, so if you haven't seen my video on polyethylene glycol, it's a really neat liquid. This liquid has a molecular weight of about one million. That means if you had a mole of it, it would weigh a million grams. And what that essentially means is that the molecular chain is really long. And so you have these very long chains and those chains are all attracted to each other through hydrogen bonding. And what that does is when you start to pour the liquid, it pulls the other chains out with it. So if you just barely pour it, it starts emptying the whole thing. <laughs> so it's called a self-pouring liquid. See how it just emptied my whole thing and all I did was tilt it a little bit? I didn't even pour it. So another cool thing about polyethylene glycol is that you can suck it up into a syringe, but you don't even have to keep the syringe dipped into the liquid. So for example, I start sucking it up. <laughs> Watch it keep filling up when I remove it. <laughs> Filled it all the way up with it out of the liquid. So the properties of polyethylene glycol are actually more familiar than you think if you've ever handled eggs. Just kidding, I'm not how too basic. <laughs> but seriously, if you've ever handled an egg, then you've handled something similar to polyethylene glycol. So if you've ever tried to separate out an egg white, it's pretty hard. If you start to drop a little bit of the egg white, then you'll notice the rest of it comes with it. That's because egg whites have very high molecular weight molecules in it. There's lots of proteins in there and those are high molecular weight and they have very good hydrogen bonding among molecules and so it tends to pull out the other molecules with it whenever it starts to pour. So you can do the same trick with egg whites without actually dipping the syringe into the egg whites. So what I'm going to do is pour polyethylene glycol into Boyle's flask here. But before I do that, let me show you what Boyle's flask actually is with just water first. So I have here just colored water so you can see it better. Okay, so what I have here is what I call the internet version of Boyle's flask. At the end of my video, I'll explain what the difference is between a real Boyle's flask and this one. So the idea is that once you start the liquid flowing, you can then pour it into the top of the cup and it should keep flowing. But you can see what happens with water here is that the level of the liquid stays level with the top of the liquid in the flask over here. So the liquid in the tube stays level with the liquid in the top of Boyle's flask. And so you can't ever get it to stay flowing up and over the top. See if I try to get it to flow, it just never does it. You can kind of get it to start happening if you lower it, let it start flowing, and then quickly move it over, a little bit comes out. So the idea is, and I've had a lot of comments suggesting to do this, is if I use the polyethylene glycol and start it flowing and then move it over the top, can I get it to continue flowing? Okay, so the hard part is getting the polyethylene glycol in here without making a huge mess. Okay, so you can see that the reaction time of the polyethylene glycol is a lot slower than the water. If I drop it below the level of the fluid in the Boyle's flask, it takes a while to start flowing out. And then with that, when I raise it above, it takes a while to stop. So let's get it flowing and see if we can flow it over, up around the top and keep it flowing. Okay, so let's see if we can get it flowing. Let's drop it below. See it flowing out the end. I'm gonna move it over the top. Here we go. It's kind of flowing. And then it stops. So let's see if I dunk it in the fluid now. Okay, we're getting continual motion. What do you think? You can see the bubbles right there are not moving. The fluid is not flowing in there. Okay, now let's lift it up and see if we can get our perpetual motion. Nope. So you can see as soon as it, as soon as I lift it up, the fluid just comes out of the tube and goes to the exact level of the water in the flask. 
Okay, so what's happening here is definitely not perpetual motion, even though it is flowing. But what's happening is it's just flowing out of the top of the tube here. It's not circulating through. Okay, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is actually not a true Boyle's flask. Why is it going backwards? Okay, it wasn't coming out, but it looked like it was flowing backwards. <laughs> so as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is actually not a true Boyle's flask. This is just the type that you see a lot on the internet, and this is the type that was made popular by the video of a guy flowing beer in a flask like this, and the beer just kept flowing and falling into the original flask. Turned out it was fake, obviously, and there was a pump that was pumping the liquid around. So a real Boyle's flask is actually supposed to use a very tiny tube at the end and it's capillary action that draws the water up into the tube and is supposed to pour it back into the original flask. And so the capillary action is what's pulling it up into the tube. But even then, Boyle's flask still won't work because for capillary action to occur you need surface tension, but it turns out that the surface tension will just make a small drop of water on the end of the tube and you have to shake it to get it loose and so you would need to continually keep shaking it to keep dropping the drops of liquid back into the flask and so you need to put work into it for the liquid to keep flowing so not perpetual motion. So even though this did not work with polyethylene glycol there actually is a liquid that this would work with and it's liquid helium. Liquid helium is called a superfluid it means that it has a viscosity of zero and so there's no friction when it starts to flow. So once you start it flowing, it will just continue flowing that direction. And so if you started this flowing one direction, it would just continue flowing through the tube, back through the top, back around in a continuous loop and never stop. But even superfluids like that don't actually violate the second law of thermodynamics because you still couldn't extract any work from it. So it's not like you could have this loop of liquid helium and put a little turbine on it and extract work from it. It wouldn't work that way but you could get it to continually flow frictionless by itself. So Boyle's flask does not work whether you have a small end to it with capillary action or a big end like this with polyethylene glycol, it just doesn't work. What you really need is a super fluid like liquid helium. Before I go today, I wanted to show you what I recently received in the mail. So I wanted to say thanks to all of you who helped me get there. I'm now at 300,000 subscribers. There are only 200,000 subscribers late. And how about we see how far we can go. Let's see if we can get to that gold play button. I think we can. Hey everyone, I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. Or if you have any ideas that you want me to try, anything you want me to put in my vacuum chamber or crush in my hydraulic press, I haven't used that in a while, let me know. And if you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out and I'll see you next time.